MTC. 1-8. Two Gateway. Princess, a solid boxer, had been given to Rita when she was ten weeks old, and Rita immediately bonded with her, petting her, feeding her, teaching her basic commands, and letting her sleep on Rita's bed. Princess 1-0 Rita, Rita, Rita. The two were always together and within arm's reach. The only time they were apart was when Rita was learning to swim. Princess had a fear of water that was so extreme that she couldn't even touch the water. Rita. Princess. Princess fears stemmed from her puppyhood when she almost drowned twice. Princess. These early traumas made water the only thing that Princess truly feared. Princess. When she came close to a body of water, she would try to pull back and seemed emotionally distressed. Would she ever be able to overcome this fear? She had a chance one late afternoon when Rita's mother took them to a shopping mall. Rita. It was located along the edge of a lake and featured a wooden boardwalk which was built along the shore. While her mother headed to a store, Rita and Princess began to play on the boardwalk. Rita Princess. Suddenly, a boy riding a bicycle slipped on the damp wooden surface, hitting Rita at an angle, which propelled her through an open section of the guard rail. Rita. She let out a scream of pain and fear as she fell into the water. She then continued to cry for help and struggled to get out. Upon hearing Rita's cry, her mother rushed to the railing, shouting for help, from the entrance of the store a hundred feet or so away. Rita. Princess was looking at the water and trembling in fear. She stood there staring at the water the one thing that had nearly taken her life. Princess. Her love for Rita overpowered her fear and she leapt out through the same open space in the railing and plunged into the water. Rita. Once in the water, Princess quickly found Rita and slowly dragged her to the shore to her grateful mother. Princess Rita. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. 1-8. 2 Exercise 1-3. Long ago in India there was a Muslim prince, the only son and the heir of the Nizam of Hyderabad who happened to fall in love with a dancer who was a Hindu but a very pretty and lovely girl. Hyderabad Nizam. His father came to know about the affair and scolded him for having such an affair with the dancer. The prince resisted intensely and passionately because his love and passion for the dancer had touched the depth of his heart and already she had become part and parcel of his very being. However, the king was afraid of the ill fame and disrepute that his son would bring by this alliance. So he locked him in the palace with a strong warning not to meet the dancer. One stormy, rainy night, the prince, who could not resist his passion, escaped from the house prison of his father and climbed on his horse and set out passionately towards his sweetheart's village. Neither the thickness of darkness nor the storm and rain ever became a problem for him. His passion for his sweetheart made him forget everything. Finally he reached her hut and she was astonished to find him at that hour of the night. Then she asked him, Dear, how could you manage to come all the way on this dark stormy rainy night? The prince replied, Sweetheart, I had the flame of your love in my heart. Dot. The king came to know about this incident. Knowing the passion and love of his son for the dancer, he happily agreed to the marriage. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. 1-8. 2 Exercise 4-6. Cohen was sitting in a small shul one Friday night waiting for prayer to begin. Cohen. As he looked up from his prayer book, he noticed an elderly man walking around the shul, offering each person a small piece of chocolate from his little box. Cohen watched as most people politely refused. Only rarely did anyone take it from this man's box. Cohen. Cohen could tell that it gave the man great pleasure when anyone accepted his offer. Cohen. When the man approached him, Cohen said politely, no, thank you, and watched as the man walked further down his row. Cohen. Dot. Standing there was Rav Yaakov Friedman, 
whom Cohen respected greatly and whom Cohen watched carefully to see what he would do. Rav Yaakov Friedman, Cohen. Cohen. Sure enough, Rav Yaakov nodded to the man and took a piece, nudging his young son to do the same. Rav Yaakov. As the old man continued walking to the next row, Rav Yaakov's son began putting the chocolate into his mouth. Rav Yaakov. Rav Yaakov gently touched his son's arm and told him he could put it into a tissue. Rav Yaakov. At the same time, Rav Yaakov also put his own in a tissue. Rav Yaakov. Daddy, asked the young boy, you urged me to take the chocolate, and you took it yourself. Why are we throwing it away now? Rav Yaakov replied, My dear son, I don't need to have the chocolate, and I certainly do not want you to have it, but I realize how much pleasure this man has every time someone takes a piece from his box. Rav Yaakov I knew we would not have it, but it is more important that this man feel good knowing that he is giving us something he considers precious. Dot. MTC Good job.